Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we're joined with Tim Alexander. Tim, you have lots of important stories to cover, so let's roll. The first one, of course, is the dealing with the issue of the, uh, how can I say, sodomy and hanging execution of the American ambassador, one of his colleagues, and two others that were with the embassy staff. This is uh, pretty nasty, but it's part of, as you say, a log on the fire. Explain what you mean by that. Yeah, well, uh, the forces that uh, want a general Middle Eastern war and want the Third World War uh, have to throw a log on the fire uh, every once in a while to keep things burning uh, very hot. And uh, this is a major attempt to do that. Uh, yeah, let's step way back from the picture, the, 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 the forest for a second and look at what's really happening. You have two broad groups of uh, people, very powerful interests in the world right now. Uh, you have the group that uh, the globalist and uh, Netanyahu, Nutty Netanyahu and his people, who strongly are pushing for and desire a general Middle East war, which they know will almost certainly trigger the Third World War. You also have a great many other people who uh, don't want to see uh, a, a Third World War with 21st century weapons of mass destruction, who don't want to see the Middle East destroyed. Uh, a month and a half ago, the Israeli generals basically uh, refused to go along with the lies that said that uh, Assad was moving his chemical weapons to air bases near Israel and was about to attack Israel. So Israel had to, to attack, and, and the Israeli generals put their foot down and said, no, that's not true, and we're not going to war against Syria or Iran. Now, uh, that was kind of followed up uh, about three weeks later by uh, the American chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Dempsey, who uh, almost got into a physical fight uh, with uh, Netanyahu, and uh, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Dan Zaparo, who's a very strong uh, Zionist and a close friend of uh, President Obama, but uh, he also almost got into a physical fight with uh, Netanyahu. And, of course, uh, in, in the case of General Dempsey, he got on his U.S. Air Force uh, C-17, flew. Uh, his next stop was to Afghanistan, to Baglan Air Force Base, which is the single most secure air base on Earth. We've spent $2 billion on air base security. And uh, even though we did that, uh, the official story is that some raghead with a uh, shoulder launch missile almost shot the plane down. In reality, it was a very high-tech uh, intelligence operation that uh, managed to damage the plane and injured two people on board, but General Dempsey wasn't injured. It was an assassination attempt. So when you take this and uh, combine with the uh, ambassador's death, these are, uh, again, signs of false flags that were actually allowed to happen. And there are also course. further logs on the fire indicating that we're much closer to a conflict with a air attack by by uh, by Israel. And now, the difference of opinion between General Dempsey and Obama's administration, Mr. Carney, uh, the administrative spokesperson, said that, no, we don't agree with uh, General Dempsey and the Joint Chiefs. We are uh, fully backing Israel. When General Dempsey says, don't attack our bases and our Navy, if Israel preemptively goes without our okay and attacks. I mean, this is pretty crazy to hear this in the general media, but most people don't realize when this report came out, we literally have mutiny in the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying, no, Mr. Obama, you can't give a rubber stamp to a preemptive attack because we don't think this is, this is wise. Well, the, the, literally, uh, we all should think the Israeli generals and our American generals for saying no to World War III. Right. Now, they, they erected two very massive roadblocks on the globalist drive for World War III and, and, and Netanyahu's drive for World War III. However, uh, what you have on the other side of this, uh, these roadblocks are a snarling pack of demonic wolves uh, with blood and, and uh, uh, dripping from their fangs and snarling and trying to get around, over, under, through uh, the 
the roadblock, and they're determined to uh, to get their war. Uh, the globalists have invested an incredible amount in setting up the global economy to fail, and to fail big time. And uh, they, as part of that general strategy, they want a world war because they have to divert people's attention from the absolute chaos of the Third World War and do it in a way that will give them justification for imposing a police state uh, throughout most of the world. Uh, so, the, you know, they want a world war. Uh, world wars serve their master, Lucifer, because he wants the, the, the hate, the death, the murder, the destruction. The, 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 the wars are nothing but a giant blood orgy. That's what he wants. Uh, but it, they also, the, the global banking cartel families, always come out of wars richer and with more power and being able to reshape society into the, the image that they want. But we're now dealing with 21st century weapons of mass destruction, and it literally is... is uh, in, insane, and that's what uh, why the generals in Israel and the United States have said no to it. Uh, they know they know the technology involved, as I do, as you do, and they know the technology involved, and they know quite frankly that uh, you cannot survive a all-out third world war in the 21st century. And uh, ultimately, you know, this is a spiritual battle. This is this is this is. Uh, literally right out of the Bible and when uh, exactly it kicks off and so forth well God knows we don't but uh, there is a major battle that what we have right now is the battle over the war will we have a war and when will it begin and that's the battle right now uh, my guess is that uh, the forces Stopping the war so far will continue to have some success, but at the end of the day, uh, before this year is over, we will be involved in something truly, truly horrible. Yeah, and, and again, here's my the formula I talk about in the timeline. If Obama's uh, polls, which are ahead of uh, Romney, slip, the war will happen before the election. If uh, either way, either Romney or Obama, the war is on after 60 to 180 days after. It'll happen sooner rather than later. And it'll be basically an air attack against Syria and Iran. We'll have incredible protests from Russia and China. Um, what will happen is it will devastate these, these countries and further increase the chances of a real, if not right away, down the road, a, a, a Sunni Shiite war that will will turn on Israel, and Israel will unleash the Samson option. Well, uh, it, the, the, it, 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 it may not get to Shuni versus Shiite exactly, because what is apt to happen is the use of the weapons of mass destruction because of the nature of how this has all been unfolding and the nature of the technologies uh, I think we're going to everything will be on a hair trigger okay so it's going to be use it or lose it time um, in in the case of 150,000 to maybe a quarter of a million rockets and missiles that are in uh, Lebanon and Syria and Iran aimed at uh, at Israel and then also some in Palestine and Gaza, um, they'll be taken out if they're not used. They'll hold some back, but uh, and they'll they also they they know that if they're going to use the heavy stuff, they've got to use it uh, virtually right away. By heavy stuff, I mean fewer explosive technologies. I mean chemical warfare. I mean uh, biotoxins. I mean advanced biological weapons and yeah. uh, when they do that Israel will go nuclear if they haven't already oh yeah yeah I Israel will be the twitchiest nation on earth at that point and most likely will unleash Samson's option as they say uh, well that means the they shower Europe with nuclear warheads exactly amazing Welcome back, and 
Yeah, what, what I see here is this embassy killings is obviously the drums are beating. There's a lot of pressure, and there was an article put up the other day by Alexander Bachman, a lot of pressure uh, to delay it till after the election. I think that Obama is not really certain whether or not it's going to make him a war president or tear his presidency down. My guess is the, the war will proceed pretty quickly if it looks like Obama's going to lose the election right now. At the current moment, the level of incompetence by, by Romney is is galactic. I'm really surprised that he's not taking hard shots on, against Obama. And the media and everybody are so outraged about the latest comment by uh, Romney saying, well, Obama's first response, this is, this is Romney's response to the embassy killings, was, well, Obama never made any statements against the people that, that uh, <clears throat> perpetrated this crime. And then people are just outraged by that. I'm thinking, that's bizarre. Uh, why are they attacking Romney? Because he's outraged at the people that killed him. He, they know that the same people that killed these ambassadors are the same people we support militarily to go and kill Syrian soldiers and police and citizens that happen to be Christians, many of them. Well, and, and they're, 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 not, they're not just... I mean, they're killing men, women, and children. They're taking families and, uh, uh, you know, literally lining them up and slitting the throats of children and so forth. I mean, the, the, the kind of stuff that, that our tax dollars are supporting in the Middle East is just beyond comprehension. Uh, it really you know. is beyond comprehension, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get back, if we can, to this concept of how Satan blinds people. Um, we uh, let's let's look at Israel. Okay, Israel is a tiny nation. Uh, it's got some very intelligent people, well-educated people, uh, basically a European people. Uh, they are surrounded by enemies, but at the same time, their enemies, uh, many of them, have shown a willingness to to uh, uh, to agree to some sort of peace treaty. Uh, I would never argue that Israel should trust its enemies or should de denude uh, themselves of their weapons uh, to defend themselves, but. Uh, it really doesn't make sense for Israel when you've got 150,000 or a quarter of a million rockets and missiles aimed at you from basically all sides. That can kill 80 or 90 percent of your people in 48 hours or less to pick a fight. Uh, you know, it's probably something you want to avoid if you want to keep your people alive. Uh, that's logical. But, and, and, a very large percentage of all the senior intelligence people and retired senior intelligence people and military uh, senior officers strongly, you know, they don't want a war. They know what will happen to their population, their civilian population. Yet, the prime minister, the defense minister, the foreign minister, and several of these characters are vehemently trying everything they can uh, to to have a war. And uh, it, it, it goes back to how Satan works. And it goes back to you can't understand, you can't even begin to understand what is happening in the world today unless you understand the spiritual aspect to it and how Satan works. Satan works by blinding people to the truth. And you can see in, in everybody has seen countless examples in their own life or the lives of people around them. For instance, why does a man or a woman who has a good marriage, children, and everything's going fine. They, they're tempted by somebody they work with or whatever, and they, they, they have an affair, and they end up losing uh, their home, ruining their life, their spouse's life, their children's life for uh, something that's not nowhere near worth <laughs> even remotely that, okay? Why? Well, because Satan has blinded you. Why does a person who maybe is a college student or maybe maybe just a young person out, whether working or whatever, suddenly say, "Oh, I think I'll throw my life away and become addicted to heroin or crack or meth." Uh, you, you don't do that, but yet 
people do it all the time because Satan blinds them to the truth that's right in front of their face. So you end up with all these people that are addicted and, and the, the women will sell themselves multiple times a day for uh, 20 bucks or 10 bucks just to get a fix. The men will rob or whatever. You know, it's just absolutely horrible what people will do who are addicted. And yet we would think, well, why would a person ever go there voluntarily to say, oh, I think I'll... I'll, I'll become a heroin addict or something. But Satan blinds you. And it happens on uh, national levels. And you have these people in power who uh, are making decisions. And, and, you know, look at Adolf Hitler. Uh, why did Adolf Hitler have to have a war? Uh, he, he had so much going for him. Why did he have to provoke uh, 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 France and, and the U.K. into a war? And then and and then a war with uh, uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, why did the Japanese, and yes, we were uh, provoking the Japanese, but uh, there was a big difference between provoking them and, and, and getting involved in the war with the United States, when even their top admiral who, who planned the attack on Pearl Harbor said, uh, after a year, though, America will defeat us. We, we, we can't defeat America. And yet their own people made the decision. Well, Satan blinds people, and that's what we have here and we have this enormous battle going on right now between people who are blinded by Satan and determined to basically destroy the world as we know it uh, and people who are saying huh gee let's uh, why don't we not blow up the world right and the thing is that a lot of people out there are going to work they're so distracted with just trying to make ends meet their family matters, their their lives, and so are so busy. They don't think that the disaster is that close. Remember the 1962 uh, uh, Bay of Pigs disaster? We thought, oh, it's going to be a nuclear exchange. The current situation is a thousandfold more dangerous, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, uh, and uh, not just the Bay of Pigs, but the uh, cu- uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, which came. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. Uh, the whole thing that yeah. ties it all in with that. The, the, this yeah. Cuban Missile Crisis is nothing compared to the current situation. This is way worse than any time during the Cold War, even when they had false orders on launch on command sequence where they were about to start a nuclear war. This situation is over the top, so many <laughs> light years, people just don't get it. They don't realize that, oh my gosh, we have a narcissistic, crazy president who's saying, ah, you know, Israel will support you, but, you know, hold off to after the election unless I'm starting to slip and then we need to be a war president. That's the kind of politicking we have. This war is being politicked. Yeah, but, you know, it's our lives. Right, but Obama doesn't care. You see, we have a crazy man in the White House. Well, we, we yes, we do. And and the, uh, as uh, Gerald Clemente says, what is it? We have a bunch of two-bit... Uh, um, Two-bit something. Free, oh, it's two-bit freak show. And that essentially is, is what we have in politics. The Illuminati, the, the globalists, pick basically people with who are, are psychotic to uh, as their agents. And then they run them for office. Yeah, people are psychotic, malleable. They're chameleons like Obama. They're sociopaths. Yeah. Uh, psychopaths. Yeah, back in a moment. That's the kind of news. Welcome back. And joining us, we have Chris Harris. Chris, you've got some remarkable reports this week. Some of them are very shocking. The first one you want to go over is the seismic report, which basically, luckily, one of the things that Mr. Jasko, the last director of the NRC, did was make them have to review these things. What they've found is that, in fact, with the new seismic data, many of the reactors that they told were safe or built in safe areas are not. They're sitting in fault strike zones, including many of the Mark One reactors and other reactors along the San Andreas Fault, the uh, sorry, the the New Madrid Fault, the San Andreas at the Diablo Canyon, and of course the now at least turned off for the moment San Onofre reactor that sits 12 miles from where I'm sitting in my studio. This is pretty nuts. And uh, the fact that they came up with this is remarkable, which means a lot of these reactors shouldn't even be operating at all in the strike zone. This is really not smart. Well, back in January, we discussed a new updated seismic report 
that that encompasses the entire uh, north, or actually encompasses North America. And it came up with some of the sh- shocking realizations that where we used to think that seismically quiet zones are now seismically active zones to the point where it could challenge nuclear power plants design bases. Those are the bases uh, upon which you design them to be uh, strengthened enough to handle what you think you're going to get and then a big fat margin on top of that. But uh, this this is a report, and we did discuss it back in January. I know I said it was, like, it was a thousand pages long, and uh, it certainly it took a long time to decipher a lot of stuff. But now, just on September uh, 10th, the, uh, there is new guidance that says every single U.S. power plant has to use this new guidance and determine whether their plant is strong enough to handle this new data, the, the new data. In other words, they have to re-bench line the entire uh, plant. This is not cheap, and it's not easy, and uh, they're, they're, the methodology is quite extensive, and it's going to it's going to take a long time to do, too. Um, nobody's going to be happy about having to reanalyze their plant, but it needs to be done, and I support it, and that's probably yeah. one of the... Threat, well, threat it just, to, uh, just makes common sense that they do that. I mean... First off, you don't build a nuclear reactor like Fukushima where they did in Earthquake Central. And here now they've discovered this information. For example, the San Onofre reactor, I think it was 14 years ago, they discovered there was a San Jacinta upthrust zone, which is literally five miles off the coast, not 75 to 120 like off Japan. We have the Diablo Canyon with three converging fault lines. This is pretty nuts. And then there's at least 25 reactors within strike distance of the uh, New Madrid fault. System, and that system is getting really active. There's lots of mini tremors and, and swarms that are occurring there that indicate. And that, by the way, that fault line is directly connected to the Gulf of Mexico and the these uh, sinkholes that are developing and the the salt dome that they drill into called Macondo, which means the devil's food that caused that disaster two years ago at the Gulf of Mexico. So there's linkages here, and there's earthquake activity happening all over the planet. The recent one last week was. A 7.6 it was actually closer to 7.9 because they fiddled the numbers. That is the new system for Richter scale. It actually would be 8.9. That's a big earthquake. If that happened here at, in, uh, if we had a seven level earthquake that struck in that area along New Madrid, we'd have a American Fukushima that would be orders of magnitude worse than the one in Japan. And it wouldn't be mainly kind of spewing it all out to the open ocean where 83% of the radiation went. It would be over a very highly populated area of the United States. Well, and, and the important thing is that uh, this seismic issue, I mean, I'll read you a paragraph, the guidance or part of a paragraph, it does tie in with Fukushima because right in the opening, this is the NRC's uh, uh, guidance for examining plant response. Like I said, this was put out September 10th. They, they want you to, the reanalyses, that is, you have to reanalyze your plants uh, using the new data, stem from lessons learned from Fukushima. I mean, that's, that's black and white, clear, right in the very first paragraph, so it's definitely applicable to any plant in the, in the world. And uh, so, yeah, that is an important thing to do, and it's important to carry this on to other uh, structures, too, that are important, like dams and uh, non-nuclear plants and uh, uh, gas lines and things like that that we rely on for our infrastructure. Right. So uh, it, it just, there's definitely a wide, widespread uh, uh, I'm sorry, ripples based on this. So let, let's go over some of the other reports. So we now dealt with seismic. What's the other area that needs to be hashed over? you got uh, Fukushima Unit Number 3, Sped Fuel Pool, brand new. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, I just got a... Uh, one of the latest uh, pictures of uh, TEPCO did a, uh, a sweep of uh, spent fuel pool at uh, Unit 3, Fukushima Unit 3, and uh, they wanted to see what the damage in that pool was. And what they're finding is that it's, it's, it's uh, terrible damage. It, now, remember, that Unit 3's structure, a lot of the iron or, say, steel beams and everything, they ended up in the spent fuel pool, and certainly now they're showing that uh, it's hard to believe that with the remote control camera that you could see, but you can see that there's there's devastating uh, damage. It's hard to even tell where the fuel is, which leads me to believe that the fuel is not really intact, or at least some of it is not intact. 
Right. Uh, we don't know how you end up fishing it out. Uh, eventually, remember we talked about Unit 4, which had some fuel and some uh, the new fuel that they removed two of the assemblies. Leonis, what? Yeah, there's two out of, what, 135 assemblies, I think it was? 100, so right? I think there was even more than that, but there's, you know, let's put it this way, that was the, the least radioactive of the bunch. Yeah, they were new fuel. The old ones are the ones that are highly radioactive, and they're also in an area where they weren't mangled. And, of course, there's all these debris that's the size of uh, your thumb or bigger that's concrete and other material in there and these the twisted uh, so you know uh, subsidence of the building and the twisted uh, wreckage of the reactors these reactors also went through uh, hydrogen explosions as well as uh, subsidence so that it's not going to be easy to slide these fuel assemblies out of there is it well no they fit pretty tightly into their own individual um or the uh or the channels that they sit in in the uh in their racks so they have a rack, and they fit right in there. They're they're and they're they're standing upright. You know, like let's talk about like soldiers. They're all standing up uh, shoulder to shoulder, and they're in a rack. Each one of them uh, uh, surrounded by a uh, stainless steel uh, double wall. Very very sturdy. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's sturdy, but they can't take what what kind of devastation I'm looking at. You know, in these pictures, and uh, there's a neutron absorber in between each one of them, so that they won't go critical in case they get too close together and. Uh, support any kind of criticality, well, I could see where that, that would be shot right there. And uh, so uh, in, in even even a boiling water reactor fuel that has its own individual sheet that they fit inside inside this rack, I, I can't see uh, I can't see that there is not at least a good portion of the fuel that would be unscathed by what, what I'm looking at. And so we don't know for sure. I mean, there's no way to tell until you get deep down inside of it, but from what I'm looking at, that's uh, tons of steel falling in on from from a great height, falling into the pool and impinging on top of uh, the racks where the fuel is. Something there, there's my well, I hate to say it, but you know, I, there is broken fuel there somewhere, and I don't yeah. know how to get that out. And certainly, uh, that is. Uh, well, it's got to be in the long-range plan. I wish it, it, it could yeah. happen sooner. I talked to uh, Dr. William Ray uh, the other day, who's one of the founding directors of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. He wants me to... I presented my paper, which is posted up on uh, the news section of the Nutramedical in Clay and Iron. And uh, that paper is uh, well-referenced. It explains sort of a summary of what's been going on over the last year and a half of our analysis of the situation. What we have basically is the worst environmental disaster in human history, and it's not even got a head of steam on yet. It's not even started to get really, really bad. The timeline is that it's going to continue releasing radiation for centuries or millennia. It's going to bioaccumulate. It will decimate the, the population of Japan in terms of normal genetics. And you see, I call the, <clears throat> the Pacific Ocean, and also not just the northern hemisphere. They're detecting this radiation in Brazil and in, uh, off the eastern coast of Australia. So it's a global problem. It's a problem that's going to change animal and ecosystem and human genetics. Uh, and they're not addressing it at all. And all I hear is uh, more lies from T TEPCO, General Electric, Fukushima, uh, plant people, and the Japanese government. We come back, we'll talk more about this. And we'll Welcome back to the Nuclear Medical Report. Yes, and uh, uh, as a result, of course, I, I've sent out reports to my report to Senator Wyden's office in Oregon, Senator Feinstein. I talked every day this week to the assistants there at uh, at uh, Senator Feinstein's office to their so-called nuclear expert. No response. I'm on them. I'm sure the do not respond list to, oh, my gosh, it's Deagling. He's a national radio show. He actually represents the Academy of Environmental Medicine, and I've talked to the doctors there, and they're all going to publish my article, which means all the doctors one way or the other are going to get to know all of this. Not just in America, but the Academy is the top academy for environmental doctors on planet Earth for U.S., Canada, Europe, and Asia. So they're going to get to know what's really going on, which is not good. Everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in the Soviet Union, which still exists, by the way. I don't believe that the Soviet Union ever went away. Or you're in Japan, or you're in Bulgaria. This radiation is going to get you, and it might take years or whatever months. The key is if you're taking nutraceuticals, you're in your zone of healing. You can actually repair the damage and lost cells, but 
you know, a lot of places people don't realize that the genetic damage is eventually what they want to do, of course, with the with not doing anything about Fukushima and considering their plan to attack Bashir is they want to make human reproduction one of great fear. Now, should it be fearful that a young woman decides that she's going to have a baby and in fear that she goes for an ultrasound or a genetic test? No. But what they want to do eventually is to say, we'll take all the fear out. We'll do what's called GIFT. That's the, the technology, gamete intrafallopian tube transport. And this technique's been around for years. <clears throat> so instead of us fertilizing the egg, we'll do a polar body exclusion to make sure the genetics are okay. You're not going to have a Fukushima baby with an extra eye or no arms or some weird genetic anomaly. Like these poor insects and other living things that are being destroyed by Fukushima, not just in Japan, but everywhere, including weird flowers, etc. And we're going to be bringing on experts. So I think that uh, we'll have Christina Consolo back tomorrow to talk about this in hour three, along with a report from Alexander Bachman and John and Ann. Uh, by the way, they did a fantastic job last week. I really want to thank uh, Ryan, uh, John, Ann, and uh, uh, for, for, t- for hosting the show last week while I was away for. Uh, very needed two day break but uh, when I'm back I'm thinking oh my gosh uh, good thing I have the Lord because I am so stressed by what I see coming and when you see gold going up like this be fearful not when gold goes up but be fearful when gold drops in the face of economic chaos if you see gold dropping you know the hammer is about to fall because they're going to do this so they can buy it all up and everybody dumps their gold. Oh my gosh, gold's down to $1,200 or $14 dollars an ounce. It doesn't make any sense. You better dump your gold. That's because the globalists want to have it all. And your dollar will be worthless. It'll be, you can use it for wallpaper or stuffing your walls for insulation. It'll be good for wiping your butt, but it won't be good for buying anything because eventually they want to get rid of cash. They also want to make sure that you can't reproduce without a license because they're going to bring in the green tax. They're going to bring in the one-child policy, which Obama plans to do. And if you don't think that America will resemble a uh, hell on earth after Obama gets another term, you better think again. That's where we're going. And the fact that they're not doing anything about Fukushima, nothing. Even the simplest things we recommend, nothing. No seawall, no ground penetrating radar, no plume studies to tell us if we're flying through a radioactive plume in, in the air. Nothing. They're not telling us, oh, you better cover your crops today, you better wear your raincoat and galoshes and leave them outside. You better decon before you go in your house because you don't tromp in all the radiation. They're telling the public in North America and Europe and, Bra- and everywhere from Brazil, they're telling them nothing. Your comments, uh, Chris and, uh, and Tim. Well, um, you talk, talk about doing nothing. Um, Unit two's uh, our primary container. We do talk about nitrogen, and I check the uh, TEPCO's uh, daily releases every day. And uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, the nitrogen injection there was a little problem with it. They were you're right. They weren't getting uh, nitrogen in, as and they found a small hole on the duct upon uh, upon investigation. But don't worry, the hole was covered with tape. And they fixed it. So I don't think they're not doing anything. They're using, remember we talked about that, they're using flimsy tape and everything else to hold this thing together. And uh, <laughs> so I, I don't kind of like the it. Dutch boy that stuck his finger in the dike, right? Exactly. You got it. Tim? <laughs> wow. You, you, you know, I, I, have to, I say this time and time again, but I read more probably than an average hundred or a thousand people. And the more I read, the more I say, you can't make this stuff up. As wild imagination as I have, I can't make this craziness up. Well, you know, the thing is that, <clears throat> Tim, and we're actually looking at this soberly. And people who have the, the gall, the absolute what I call vicious ignorance to actually say you people are crazy you're schizophrenic they have an ottoman attacks just to, they're just <sighs> bringing it right up from their toenails the, the what I call the stupid spit the spittle from idiots that want to say that we're just making this up we're not when I talk to top doctors like Dr. Ray and other nuclear experts like Ernie Gunderson's wife and other people like yourself uh, Chris Harris all the time we're talking scientists. We're talking about people that actually can scientifically measure what's going on. We don't have complete data. In fact, the, one of the worst things about what's going on is after a year and a half, we have virtually no data. We don't know how much is in our food, air, and water. We don't know what's bioaccumulating. We don't know what's happening in the air plumes. If you go one certain day, and it doesn't necessarily mean if it's raining either. You can have a sunny day, and I've seen my radiation detector spike up for a while and then drop. And it's doing some funky things lately. It's like, 
Ooh, why is it doing that? It's up in the 60s, and then, then a few minutes later, it's dropped back down to the 40s. I said, that's not good. It's a wave well, of radiation. Well, you know, you've got all these reactors <laughs> sitting there, and they've, they've, they've gone China syndrome, probably, at least some of them. Oh, yeah. And, no, no. and they, they have spread the most nastiest stuff, literally, that we know of in the universe around, and they continue to be fronts of poison nonstop and will be for thousands of years. And essentially, we're not really doing anything. Uh, a band-aid a kid uh, the dutch kid that puts his finger in the in the, the crack in the dike we're we're really all this time has gone by and we really haven't done anything then you look at some uh, something like uh uh the the gulf of mexico and all the core exit and everything there i mean you know i i love seafood but i don't want to eat seafood from the pacific i certainly don't want to eat it from the gulf of mexico uh and and you know and then then you look at at, at these in Insane idiots that that uh, seem uh, they want World War Three, and I mean, oh, you say what? You want World War Three? You know, why don't you just jump off a cliff and leave the well, rest of us alone? Well, 90, and, 90 and, minutes into this, ninety minutes into the World War Three scenario, anybody living in a large city in the Western world, Russia or China, will be dead. 90 minutes. It's not going to be a day or even a day and a half. Now, there'll be people that will be scrounging and surviving in the rims of this for a matter of weeks or months. But even the survivors, 95% of them will be dead within within three months. And virtually, if there's a, a nuclear winter, if there's a destruction of the ozone layer, any remaining human life, even those deep and sequestered in caverns miles underneath the earth, they're going to die too. They're not. No one's going to survive this, not even cockroaches. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. I kind of think the cockroaches might, but maybe I'm optimistic. Yeah, but actually, uh, yeah. cockroaches have hard shells, and they can tolerate different things. And, yes, they can tolerate a little more radiation, but if they don't have certain kinds of things like food and air and other things, they die too. So, yeah, they're resistant, but they're gonna, they'll are gonna they take a little longer to croak. Uh, and just like the, the, the cockroaches that go you know, a mile or two in these so-called hotels underground for continuity of government, continuity of the global elite maniacs. Con I call the, actually, well, let's change the term, continuity of scum. We got to make sure we maintain a culture of scum for the next civilization that rises from the ashes of this one. Well, the the narcissistic sociopaths feel that it's very important that they survive because uh, they will have blown up the world and they've got to keep things going or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Without them, the world would not be screwed up when it comes back. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you don't want the world to uh, well, just come a back little, perfect. A little, a little joke we, here. Here's we the thing. We do know the answer. We do know that Christ will return. We do know that, that yeah. when other and how other everything uh, goes south, that God is real in Christ. Uh, is our savior. He saved us once uh, by his death on the cross. And uh, the Bible clearly says that if we get into a, this this nightmare that it, it looks like we are, that well, when Christ you're listening will return. To this pro when you're listening to this program, you have two witnesses, your intellect, which we want you to use. Keep your skepticals on. But your spirit, if you're truly honest and want to know the truth, you can pray and hear that the truth is get yourself prepared for what's coming, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and for radiation, we have our radiation kits. Be ready. It's not just something that's theoretical. It's happening today and every day. And now these maniacs are planning on hitting a live, one of the largest nuclear reactor complexes in Earth, the Bashir in Iran. Well, and the, and the Syrians and the Iranians will return the favor and hit the, uh, the Israeli reactor. And uh, yeah, yeah, in other words, they're going to they'll pummel the reactors and uh, in the Negev Desert and 800 plus nukes there and release a massive plume of radiation from Israel. Oh, yeah. It's just... It's too nuts. It's, it's like if you're thinking, uh, God, did I take a wrong turn? Am I in hell already? No. <laughs> no, you're just going to get the flame stick around your toes before we take it home. <laughs> God bless. Take care, everybody. Take action. Read these reports. We'll have them posted up after the show.